Well, welcome to this talk. It's still the 12th of December. Now, the Prime Minister in the UK has just declared basically a, an Omicron state of emergency. Um, there's going to be problems here. So what this means the Omicron variant is going to be going everywhere in England and in the other parts of the UK we already know about, as we've been saying on this channel for some time now. If you're in the States, the same is going to apply. There's just going to be a slightly longer delay. Basically, this variant is going around the world everyone basically everyone in the world is going to be exposed to it and that's what's going to happen now before we look at what the prime minister said let's look at what he didn't say he didn't say that everyone should get ready and optimize their immune system by 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 taking 50 milligrams of zinc a day as an adult dose as a, as a minimum dose for everyone to take um, he, he didn't say that everyone should be taking at least an absolute minimum of 4,000 international units of vitamin d a day that's a hundred micrograms of vitamin d a day he didn't say those things um so i can't say it because he didn't say it but um he didn't say those things but let's look at what he did say before we do that let's just look at south africa so this is um ward current this is remember south africa's got a population of uh, 60 million people so here we see the number of patients in hospital with a uh, omicron diagnosis 5.56 uh, 5 uh basically just over five and a half thousand now remember these are people who've been diagnosed with omicron in hospital not necessarily in fact the, the majority did not go to hospital for omicron there were incidental findings and remember this is in a population of 60 million people so uh, we want that one so um five and a half thousand people in hospital uh, in general care wards 4733 intensive care 405 high care 425 so you might think that's relatively low numbers for a population of 60 million i certainly do think that's low numbers and when we go on and look at the level of interventions for currently admitted patients remember these are patients that have got omicron positive diagnosis positive tests currently in hospital 151 are currently ventilated out of a population of 60 million people and uh, 782 people who have been diagnosed positive for Omicron, whether they're admitted for Omicron or not, are currently receiving oxygen. And you might think that they are remarkably low numbers. So I certainly think they're remarkably low numbers. Now, of course, we can't directly compare the situation in South Africa, the situation in the States or, or the UK. There are differences. The main differences are these. Younger demographic in South Africa, certainly. So that's going to be a big factor in South Africa's favour. The next big difference between South Africa and let's say let's say England, for example, although the United States and Canada would be fairly similar. But the big difference is that there's a lot of immunity in the United Kingdom, in England, say, but a lot of that is vaccine induced. Whereas most of the immunity in South Africa is natural infection induced. This is the big difference. This is why we might be worse off in England, because most of the immunity that we have comes from vaccines, whereas most of the immunity in South Africa is from the incredibly uh, prolific three previous waves have had. And many people, most people that are immune, have levels of immunity rather in South Africa. Uh, it's from natural infection. So they're the two big differences and, and that they are they are pretty big provisors, really. But let's, let's go on and see what the prime minister said. Uh, no one should be in any doubt there's a tidal wave of Omicron coming. So as we've been saying for some time, yes, we agree. Uh, it's now clear that uh, two doses of vaccine are simply not enough to give the level of protection we all need. So very much going down the vaccine route. No, As I say, no mention of zinc, um, no mention of vitamin D, um, unfortunately. Um, if you watched yesterday's video with Dr. Cohen, you'll realise why I'm uh, stressing this now. You might want to flick back and watch that very, very illuminating video. Um, but the good news is that our scientists are confident that with a third dose, a booster dose, we can all bring our levels of protection back up. So Prime Minister's saying we all need a third dose. At this point, our scientists cannot say that Omicron is less severe. Well, if that's what our scientists are saying, that's what our scientists are saying. We've just looked at the South Africa data that shows that 782 people are currently being oxygenated in South Africa. A very low percentage 
compared to the 100% that needed ventilated, not ventilated, oxygenated in previous waves. Thankfully, nothing like that many needed ventilated. But uh, virtually everyone in previous waves were on oxygen. Now, relatively small numbers are on oxygen, which I find encouraging. But let, let's stick with the Prime Minister. A wave of Omicron through a population that was not boosted would risk a level of hospitalisation that could overwhelm our NHS, sadly lead to very many deaths. So clearly his scientists, his doctors have advised him about this. So this is what he's saying. Therefore, anyone aged over 18 in England, uh, they can get a third booster dose from this week, providing it's at least three months since their second dose. So I had to wait. Uh, I waited six months for my booster dose. But now, uh, as a result of this emergency situation, it's been reduced to three months. And um, the, the data is showing a third booster dose prevents around 75% of people getting any symptomatic infection with Omicron. So um, we know that the booster dose is going to have this big effect. Uh, so 25% 25 of people that have been vaccinated, if they're exposed to the um, virus, could get symptomatic disease, hopefully, or minimal disease, and 75% shouldn't get any. So... Um, Pretty convincing data there, to be fair, but we also know there's pretty convincing data from vitamin D and zinc, which wasn't mentioned and is would work against a range of viruses, but never mind. Live data. Um, so hospitals, th th this is the South Africa one. So so that's the link I've just given you that one. So if you don't believe, well, don't, don't believe me, don't believe me, check it out. Right, now, um, Nadeem Sahar was speaking on BBC this morning. Omicron cases have now been found in hospital in the UK. He did not say where. He did not say how many. He did not say what comorbidities they had. He did not say whether they've been vaccinated or not. He didn't say if they were sick or not. He's actually said Omicron cases have been found in hospital. So we can assume, I guess, there's at least two. But we, 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 we don't know. But he did say... Uh, even if Omicron were to prove half as severe as Delta, um, it would cause severe problems. If he, even if it was just half as severe as Delta, it would cause uh, extreme pressure on the health service. Um, the data from South Africa is looking like it's maybe nearer 10% compared to 50%, about 10% as bad. But we don't know that yet, and Boris Johnson's scientists... At this time, our scientists cannot say that uh, Omicron is less severe. So that is the current uh, official position. So that's what I, uh, I, I report to you. Now, quite a bit has this come from this paper here. Uh, SARS coronavirus, two variants of concern and variants under investigation in England. Technical briefing 31 came out a couple of days ago. UK Health Security Agency. Um, cut-off date for this data was the 6th of December, so it's already six days out of date, but uh, they covered uh, 260 confirmed cases of Omicron variant, identified through sequencing and genotyping, so this is, this is good diagnosis. Um, addition, additional possible cases identified through the S-gene target failure, which we believe is also characteristic of Omicron. Higher risk of transmission from secondary attack rates was identified. So the secondary attack rates are whether someone's likely to pass it on to their contacts. Now, the risk of household transmission from an Omicron index case compared to Delta was 3.2 times more likely to pass it on to other members of the household. Quite significant. Risk of a close contact, they were more than twice as likely to become infected compared to Delta. So we do see that this is significantly more infectious than Delta. Household secondary attack rate, if you actually look at the absolute risk, though, um, if someone's infected, 21.6% of households secondary attack would occur, affecting other members of the household. Delta, it was 107 So it's kind of, it's kind of double-ish, isn't it, really, is what we are looking at. But the same paper also says a three- to eight-fold increase in reinfection with the Omicron variant. So people that have been infected are getting reinfected. People that have had one or two doses of vaccine are getting infected. So basically this means that the, the, the Omicron variant has got a, a relatively naive population to just romp through because the previous infections and the vaccines, at least two doses of vaccines, are not providing much infection protection so three to eight times increased risk of reinfection with omicron compared to delta that is 
that is significant. But of course, that's also true for South Africa. But the big difference, as we said, in South Africa, a lot of the people have immunity from natural infection, which is going to be much more polyclonal. It's going to affect much more, it's going to stimulate much more parts of the, the immune system than just the spike protein from our vaccine. So that, 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 could, be, that could be an important difference. Um, a 20 to 40 fold reduction in neutralizing activity of Pfizer 2 dose vaccine sera for Omicron. So what they've done here is they've taken the sera, that's the plasma, basically, the, the liquid part of the blood from people that have been infected, from people, sorry, that have been um, vaccinated by Pfizer. And they find that there's a 20 to 40 fold reduction in the uh, neutralizing activity of those antibodies. That's huge. At least a tenfold loss of activity compared, when compared to Delta. So uh, the antibodies are ten times less effective in Omicron than they are in Delta. This is, this is a very, very big reduction. Greater reduction in activity was even seen for AstraZeneca. So AstraZeneca doing even worse than the Pfizer. Even more loss of protection. But... Uh, an mRNA booster dose, whether you've had the initial Pfizer or where you've had the, uh, the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, an mRNA booster dose resulted in an increase in neutralizing activity irrespective of primary vaccination. So all the booster doses are going to be Pfizer or Moderna, the most expensive options, but the government are saying that they are the best. Uh, data are urgently, urgently required on the durability of neutralizing activity. So in other words, they don't know that one, how long this is going to last for. A moderate to high vaccine uh, effectiveness of 70 to 75 percent is seen in the early period after a booster dose. Early period meaning the first month or two. Again, we don't know the longevity of this response. And yet all of the eggs are being thrown into the booster dose uh, basket. With previous variants, vaccine effectiveness against severe disease had been higher than effectiveness against mild disease. So in other words, here it's overwhelmingly likely that the protection against severe disease, hospitalisation and death will be higher than 70 to 75 percent. That is extremely likely because that's been the case with previous uh, variants. Lateral flow tests still work. Uh, no question, lateral flow tests are still working against Omicron. Now, I think part of the reason that government's being so pessimistic about this might come from this. Um, Modelling the potential consequences of the Omicron SARS coronavirus 2 vary in England. Now, um, we've had very strange data in the past from modelling that's turned out not to be true. Of course, this we don't know the future yet. We do know that this is the current situation in South Africa. Uh, very minimal amounts of people requiring oxygen. But we don't know what's going to be happening in the UK. Of course not. Growth rate for the Omicron variant depends on the level of immune escape. And we've seen that is high. We know that's high. And the intrinsic uh, transmissibility, we believe that is high as well. So these are double whammies giving rise to this huge exponential growth in Omicron. 5.1 to 12.8 fold reduction in neutralizing activity relative to Delta. That research study is saying is what they are assuming, which is about what we have uh, seen. It could be even worse than that. Now, intrinsic transmissibility. Um, Omicron variant is growing in England at an exponential growth rate of R is equals 0.29. So... In other words, the R is going up by 0.29 per day. This is just huge. It's just huge. This corresponds to a 2.4 day doubling time. So the number of Omicron cases is doubling every 2.4 days. And I've no reason to assume it's any different in the States or anywhere else. It's just that this is where we have the data for. This is the nature of this virus combined with a population whose immunity is largely from vaccination. Um, so that gives us a, a, a real time R value of four. So each infected person is infecting four other people. And of course, each infected person will go infect four more. And uh, so on. So we get this rapid exponential growth. Uh, they're assuming a generational interval of 5.5 days. 
it could be well that, that is an assumption we don't actually know that yet some people have been saying that the the generational time the incubation period uh, for omicron is less than this but that, that's what they're assuming surge in sars coronavirus 2 transmission uh, beginning in late december 2021 well it's the 12th of december now so yeah and basically what what people are saying is by the middle of the month so basically that's by this time next week omicron is going to account for 50 percent of the uh the variants in the uk as we believe it's going to displace delta that's the good news about this this is displacing this is displacing delta that's the good news uh, infection infections to exceed peak level of recorded during January 2021 in England. So it's going to be higher than the peak that we've seen in terms of previous cases. Now, bear, using this data, the, the, these modelling groups from London School of uh, Hygiene and Tropical, was it London School of Hygiene and uh, Tropical Medicine, a very famous international institution. Their most optimistic scenario for the 1st of December all the way through to the 30th of April 2022 in England. Now, if we assume, if it turns out that Omicron has low immune escape and booster jabs are highly effective, then only 21 million people will catch the infection. There'll only be 175,000 hospitalizations and there'll uh, only be 24,700 deaths. The most pessimistic scenario is uh, 34.2 million infections, half of them getting on for half a million hospital admissions, which I can't really see we can do that. That, that, that would cause terrible, terrible, terrible problems. Uh, 74,000, 75,000 deaths. So that, that this group is predicting it will, will be between this as the best case scenario and this as the worst case scenario. Um, somewhat inconsistent it has to be said with the South Africa experience where this has actually happened in the real world where there's only five and a half thousand patients hospitalized in a population of 60 million so um, but th th this is coming this is coming straight from you know th this is the London School of Tropical Medicine you know th this is what these people do th they, they are experts in this uh, without the implementation of further control measures, hospital admissions resulting in the Omicron wave of transmission could exceed the peak level recorded in England during the previous winter wave. And if it's anything like half a million admissions, um, we've got huge problems. And by extension, carry this on to other countries and huge problems are also there because... But it all depends on the amount of immune escape and the intrinsic transmissibility of the virus, of the Omicron variant. Now, in populations with high levels of immunity, such as England and South Africa, now we've said the, the type of immunity is different, but what this group is saying is Omicron variant has the potential to cause significant disruption. In populations with low levels of immunity, such as the rest of Africa, Omicron may or may not outcompete with Delta. So we know we know that it's outcompeting Delta in South Africa, where there's high levels of natural immunity. We know that it's outcomparing Delta in England, Scotland, where there is high levels of vaccine-induced immunity. But of course, we don't know whether that's largely driven by immune, immune escape or the intrinsic transmissibility of the virus. Uh, if it's driven by the intrinsic transmissibility of the virus, this is going to spread throughout the rest of Africa in pretty short order as well and given that we've had positive cases in egypt in nigeria in botswana in south africa we can assume this is happening already but we are not hearing about a flood of people in those countries getting uh, severely ill or dying so i think we should be as ready for this as possible if we live in a country of course we have to abide by the laws and regulations of that country um, it's a pity they didn't advise people to increase their vitamin D levels and their zinc levels because we believe that both of those will be protective. But they didn't do that. They just went flat out for booster doses of vaccine, um, which, as they've given evidence for, is effective. So that's where we are. The next week or two is going to be uh, interesting. And of course, we're going to be following it with great uh, interest. At the moment, um, my anxiety levels aren't too high. I think these 
predictions could well be uh, pessimistic. Thank you for watching.